Hello, Mr. Collier here. This is going to be a video for Lab 5B, Friction. And the question we're asking ourselves today is how does friction affect motion? There's uh, two main parts to this lab where we're looking at different types of friction. For our first part, we're looking at air friction or air resistance. And uh, the setup for this lab is to have the ramp at hole 7. You're going to have the ramp at hole 7. The first photo gate is at the 20 centimeter mark and the second photogate, the B photogate, is at the 70 centimeter mark. The important number here is that they are 50 centimeters apart and that's going to be important for our calculations later. What we're going to do first is get a set of control data. Uh, I'm not going to actually collect all the data but I'm going to show you how it's done. We're going to be in CPO timer mode. Now CPO timer mode gives you an A, a B, and an AB time. We only care about the AB time for this lab. And you'll see on your data table, there's only a spot for the AB data. So what, for the control, you're simply putting the car at the top of the ramp, letting it go down, and recording the AB time. And those are going to be your controls. For your actual experiment, you're going to attach a sail to the car. This is going to create extra air friction. We've got uh, these paper plate ones, and they attach just by sticking it on top of the flag of the car. And then you can send the sail car down the plate, uh, sorry, down the ramp. Or we also have some cardboard ones. So all there is to this is three trials with the control car, three trials with the sail car, and all you're recording is the AB time on the two data tables. Okay, Mr. Wendell here for uh, Lab 5B, the second section. Uh, this is the setup where we're looking at some uh, rolling and sliding friction. First thing you need to do is when you set up the track, you want to make sure the track is level. Just take a look at it, make sure that the, uh, all the feet are touching the desk and that it doesn't look lopsided one way or the other. Next thing you're going to do is uh, at the far end, you're going to put a little piece of clay. Uh, that's there to stop the car. If you have a partner who's going to catch the car, that works fine also. On the launching side, we're going to use a rubber band. We're going to take the rubber band, place it over one of the sides, twist it, and basically make it look like an X. You also want to adjust the thumb screw. Uh, this should be out about an inch or so uh, from the wood post. Uh, that'll give you enough deflection on the rubber band to send the car down the track. All right, also along with your setup, you want to put your photo gates. Uh, the first one should be 20 centimeters from the launch point. So that's four of the circles out. And the second one is going to be 70 centimeters. So there's 50 centimeters between the two photo gates. We'll get data here in a moment, but first we're going to show you how to launch the car. You're going to take the nose of the car. You're going to place that on the track with the nose of the car on the rubber band. Easiest thing to do is rest your hand on the wood piece. Put your finger on one of the little, looks like seat backs, and just pull your finger backwards. And that's going to shoot the car down the ramp. Do that one more time. Again, set the car up. Nose on the rubber band where it crosses. You're going to put your finger on this little nub here, pull back, and it will fling down the track. The second car we're going to use is the blue car. Uh, this car has wheels, and we're going to look at rolling friction. Same sort of setup here. Put the nose of the car on the rubber bands where they cross. Put your hand on the wooden post, and flick the car. It will go down the track. Now, for the rolling friction, sometimes this will bounce back. So you want to make sure you have a partner grab the car on this end so it doesn't bounce back through the photo gate. 